Mansia Nongtongpo, or the discoveries of John Bull in a trip to Paris, read by Simon Jones. John Bull, from England's happy isle, too bold to dread mischance, resolved to leave his friends a while and take a peep at France. He nothing knew of French indeed, and deemed it jabbering stuff. For English he could write and read, and thought it quite enough. Shrewd John to see, and not to prate, to foreign parts would roam, that he their wonders might relate when snug again at home. Arrived at Paris with his dog, which he for safety muzzled, the French flocked round him all agog, and much poor John was puzzled. He went into a tavern straight, where viands smoked around, and having gazed at every plate, he sat in thought profound. He asked who gave so fine a feast, as fine as e'er he saw. The landlord, shrugging at his guest, said, Je vous n'entends pas. Oh, Mounsir Nontongpo, said he. Well, he's a wealthy man, and seems disposed, from all I see, to do what good he can. A table set in such a style holds forth a welcome sign, and added with an eager smile, With Nongtongpo I'll dine. Then to the Palais Royal on he trudged with honest tray. Whose house is this? said Curious John, so spacious and so gay. A Frenchman, as he gaped around with wonder and with awe, salutes him with the former sound. Eh? Je vous n'entends pas. Ha ha! says John. Is this his place? Why, surely he's the king. How high is he in fortune's grace, who owns so vast a thing? He rambled next to Marley's height, Versailles' grand scene to view, and asked a country begging white if he the master knew. The fellow, staring, scratched his head and idly stretched his jaw. At length, to John in answer said, Eh, je vous n'entends pas. What, this too his? exclaims John Bull. His riches have no end. I wish my pockets were as full. Would I had such a friend? Strolling along another day, to feast his eager eyes, a lady passed him, young and gay. He stood in fixed surprise. Struck by her charms, he asked her name of the first man he saw, from whom with shrugs no answer came but, Je vous n'entends pas. The girl too, Nongtong pause, says he, then cast a tender glance. I'm right, this Nongtong Po must be the greatest man in France. Soon after trudged a footman nigh, whose hands were full of game. John saw them with a hungry eye, and asked for whom they came. But je vous n'entends pas again was all that he could draw, which raised new wonder in his brain at this great Nong Tong Po. A shepherd with his flock appears, the sheep were large and fat. Not understanding John, he hears, but humbly doffs his hat. For John, with earnest looks, began to ask whose flock he saw. At length he heard the poor old man cry, Je vous n'entends pas. Why, what the deuce, our hero cries, are these two Nongtong paws? Why, surely all that meets his eyes he gets within his claws. An infant train then comes in view and fills his heart with joy. He gazes with affection true and pats a smiling boy. He asks the nurse, but asks in vain, whose pretty brood appears. For je vous n'entends pas again assails his wondering ears. A splendid carriage next he sees, that four fine horses draw. Boy, say, whose coach, whose steeds are these? Eh? Je vous n'entends pas. Well, honest Bill astonished roars, I'm surely in a trance. On Nong Tong Poor, what fortune pours? He must be king of France. Next day, to view a vast balloon, the folks came far and near. To see it start, John hurried soon, for every sight was dear. He asked a woman on the ground who paid for the balloon. But Je vous n'entends pas, he found, was still the only tune. Says he, I now don't wonder, dame, to find tis his balloon. For sure this Nong Tong Poor can claim all that's beneath the moon. Then he beheld a train of cooks, whose heads rich dishes bear. With a keen appetite he looks and longs to have a share. 
But je vous n'entends pas, he heard, when he the host would know. I, nong tong po, says he, is the word for all things good below. At last he saw a hearse pass by, and to the sexton said, his bosom heaving with a sigh, Pray who, my friend, is dead? The man the selfsame answer made, as all had done before. John heaved another sigh and said, Is then thy grandeur o'er? I envied thee thy worldly state. Alas, I little knew the malice of approaching fate. Poor Nong Tong Po, adieu. Then pondering o'er the untimely fall of one so rich and great, reflections deep his mind appall on man's uncertain state. For though in manners he was rough, John had a feeling heart. So thought he now had seen enough, and homeward should depart. Besides, he panted to relate all that he heard and saw. The pride, the pomp, the wealth, the fate of mighty Nong Tong Po. Born swiftly by a favoring gale, he reached his native ground, and to surprise them with the tale, he called his friends around. They hear it all with silent awe, of admiration full, and think that next to Nong Tong Po is the great traveler, Bull. Thank you.